I think I get it. So like these images found in nature, visual cues can evoke an immediate emotional response. Exactly. Yes. The color and pattern our eye and mind really likes. Like cute and cuddly here. Immediately yes. identified as that. You got it. I really get it. You got it. Hey, you're going to eat the rest of that cheese? <sighs> OK, I get it. Let's learn some more from Janet and how neuroscience can be applied to your next meeting. Welcome. We're speaking with Janet Spurstad, Program Director for the Madison College Meeting and Event Management Degree Program. Welcome, Janet. Thank you, Bill. Good to speak to you again. Nice to see you. The subject is neuroscience applied, and I, I just want to start at the 30,000-foot level and, and, yeah. and ask, first of all, neuroscience is psychology, right? Applied? Well, it's really, it's, it used to be. It's so much more integrated because really there's a thing called fMRI, which is functional magnetic resonance imaging. And it allowed us to see inside of healthy minds and healthy brains. And so we weren't just dealing with people who had sicknesses or were ill or brain damage. We now can really look at brains that are high functioning and healthy. So it really encompasses more disciplines and interdisciplinary of other sciences, social sciences, um, philosophy, many more uh, disciplines that we didn't really understand that were part of it. How, but how did it find its way into the meeting and event professional's life? It, it, well, it's interesting because meetings and events are really, it's about bringing people together and everyone brings a brain to a meeting, right? Otherwise they wouldn't be there. And so I think it really started, people were looking at how can I make meetings and events even more meaningful and produce the results I want. And so I think with the um, introduction of neuroscience coming into the mainstream, because we all like to think about ourselves and learn more about ourselves. So I thought there was a natural transition into when we bring these people together to study it even more of how to use our logistics as levers to modulate the, the moods, the behaviors that we want. I mean, if you look at the tools you can leverage, it's, I guess, color and sound and words and are all those yeah. things part of this area? Oh, they are. And a great example is like lighting. So our, our attention um, is, is like a light of a floodlight that we use in events. Um, and it's this broad spectrum light and our attention can get really wide and high and just do a, a scan. But then at times we want to have really focused pin spot attention, just like that lectern light illuminates that one point and we focus on it. We can do that by modulating people's attention just by that lighting. We can do that with the coloring. PSCV has a great research paper that talks about the different coloring of green and how it affects us. It's not just psych psychological. There are different neurons that react differently in our brain and the reward region lights up with blues and greens and red. That is the red, that's a threat. Mm. And that activates the threat region. So it's just not psychology. And we can use those levers to create the experience we want. So should a planner, a meeting and event planner, be sensitive to the agenda? What, what, what subjects are on what time of day? Or the presenter, if somebody has yeah. a, a real um, highly visual, noisy musical presentation, does, it, does the order matter? It does matter. And a great analogy is our brain is a battery. So when is your brain freshest? Well, probably mornings, yeah. Yep, same thing, right? Because our, our body just woke up, our brain woke up, it's fully charged, it just slept overnight. So that's when it's ready. And so big decision making, um, heavy topics, global topics, topics that allow us to pull from other things um, are great in the morning because our brain is really able to use it. And as we use that to make decisions, prioritize, our, our, the battery starts to go down. And so if you took that topic in the afternoon, ideas would be less, conversation would be less, solutions would be less, because the brain is not as recharged. 
So we have to keep recharging our brain through that lunch period, using that spacing, really important. So what would be, let's say, the first presentation you'd have after lunch? Would it be one that requires you to, like a breakout room where you're physically engaging yeah. or, or, or big decisions, or what would, what would it be? You know, I, from my studying of, of my neuroscience and being an event planner, I think there's, there's things that we think would work, but I don't think they work anymore. We often think, oh, right after lunch, we have to have something engaging and have them doing something and moving. But what's happening to the body after lunch? It's digesting this. Right. So we're asking something to do something when it doesn't want to do it. And so the, right after lunch is a beautiful time for us for reflection time. So giving case studies for people to read and to give thought to and maybe give input to. Um, talking to someone else, just as you and I are doing. This right. really low level conversation, more intimate, nothing's being asked of us, we can think freely and just have a dialogue. That's a beautiful time after lunch. Then later on, great time to get the body re-engaged. Uh, 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 like sometime after lunch? You mean yeah, after, because yeah. we just, our brain just digested all that information and food and our body just digested information and food talked about it, it's powering back up. It's interesting, uh, Janet, because I think meeting and event professionals have always felt they were in control of these things. If I, if I, if I come up with the right music, if I come up with the right mm. meal, I, and, 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 and while that's yeah. true, there is a psychology behind all this that, yeah. that's also important to understand from what you're saying. Yeah. Know, know which part of the brain you're working with and, and, uh, and what, it, what, what it needs. Exactly, you know, things that have a heavy, ba heavy base and a heavy beat, really affect the part of the brain called the amygdala and that just does a couple things. Do I run or do I stay and fight? Right, right. And so this heavy beat, boom, 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 that's going through. The amygdala says, what is that? And it's either going to fight it or it's going to run. And then, they, then the occipital brain goes in and starts to look around. It's like, oh, this is the general session. There's my friend. Right. So then the information comes up like, oh, I'll stay. This is really great. This is fun. But it does create a reaction. There's it going does. To be a reaction. And dopamine comes in then. Right, right. And so there's this whole chemical experience happens in the brain before we even can think about it. But Janet, it was your brain we wanted to tap into, <laughs> not mine. So we thank you for that. I've been speaking with Janet Spurstad, Program Director for the Madison College Meeting and Event Management Degree Program. A good friend of ours. Always a pleasure to speak oh, with you. Oh, always a pleasure. Thank though. you so thank much. Thank you. Thank you.